you're recommending people start buying some puts now? Yeah, I think it's a great time to, Joe. I mean, the fact is the S&P 500 is 49% comprised of the three sectors that she most hard hit. So that's, of course, tech, which you previously talked about. Expect a breakup of the major companies there if, in fact, we start to price in the risk, which Joe is not priced in right now. There's no chance that Elizabeth Warren, candidacy or presidency, is priced in an S&P 500 of um, near 3,000. So what are the three main sectors that comprise almost half of the S&P? Of course, tech, of course, financials, and of course, health care, all three of which I think um, would fall precipitously if the market and when the market starts to discount even some chance, let alone a pretty good chance of an Elizabeth Warren a nomination and later presidency. You're OK if, if you end up in, in her, uh, her campaign ads now for as another uh, you know, another bankster that doesn't like her, that, that's a badge of honor for, for... Oh, look, Joe, our, 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 our game here is to, is to help out our clients and to, and to make money in the markets. And I think that a way to do that is factoring in the biggest risks. And this is, for me, the biggest risk. Markets right now are certainly not pricing in. Hey, it's, um, corporate reform, corporate tax reform, which was a very big part of the leg up that we've seen over the past two years in the S&P 500, is going to go away. Um, so we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect positions. I'm not saying liquidate, but hey, I think it's a good idea to put on a put option with March expiry. It comes right after the first two biggie caucus and primaries. Of course, Iowa, New Hampshire, first week of February. And then you have Super Tuesday in early March. So I think it's a very prudent, very inexpensive way to protect one's positions. You like, uh, look at that backdrop. It's beautiful. You know, it's going to be October tomorrow. I know. Yeah, you know, Miami's amazing. You, you know what's <laughs> you guys coming. You guys know what, I mean, here. will you sign on for you know, no income tax either down there? Will you sign on it's for a, doing yeah. all of our uh, interviews on remotes? Would, could we do this? Could, would it matter if we weren't here, Kayla, do you think? Oh, you if, mean move us to Miami? Move the entire show to Miami? Or move, move the entire Washington network to DC. move the entire. <laughs> oh, no, hey, not to the swamp. Where it's we can, like still 90 degrees, by the way. We can, go, we can go to the real swamp. A down lot of there. hedge funds. The Everglades <laughs> is down there. We don't need to go to, to the Washington. Is that swamp. being considered? I'm joking. Only in my, my, there my are deluded lot, there's mind. There's an exodus. Uh, only in my deluded mind. Guys, there's mind. an exodus from New York there and New Jersey is. to Who's South Florida. Who's the latest? Uh, and it's not icon. just the weather. <laughs> no, That's no right. Kidding. Carl Icahn. No kidding. That's it's exactly salt. right. A lot of hedge funds I come down no here. Salt. Of course, you have the tax benefits, quality of life, and of course, as you mentioned, Joe, the weather is impeccable, especially at this time of year. And you keep telling yourself that as the water rises above <laughs> you. You'll be, I hope you can last this interview out <laughs> come before on. you're... Um, <laughs> Ed, yes. You just are worried, I think. I mean, there's no reason to stay long. There's barely any reason for you to stay long at this point. It's all about trade as well, right? Well, I think the outlook at this point is, uh, is about as clear as mud. Um, you know, we have a global economy that's very weak and vulnerable. We have a U.S. economy that's um, resilient at this point and, and um, keeping things in, uh, you know, keeping our head above water. But vulnerable? Uh, but, there, but there are major uh, cross currents in both directions. And um, I think that raises both the upside and downside risks for uh, financial markets. Um, so, yeah, we're sticking pretty close to uh, the shore in terms of our you know, positioning relative to policy benchmarks. I like that. Um, I we heard that. You, you heard that before, Will? They don't say it in London much at the moment. <laughs> no, you get right to those shores. No, but sticking close to shore means like it, so keeping, it, keeping you don't want to be out in a storm uh, exactly. if you can't see the, you know, to try to get the boat back in there. Keeping but a, just sitting there for your benchmark weights and not taking any, well, any conviction I mean, calls. I mean, we're taking or, you know, or some, money some modest US tilts, equities. right? So, um, you know, we're overweight uh, global equities relative to fixed income modestly because of the relative value discrepancies that have built up there. Uh, but yeah, keeping uh, keeping a focus on the United States economy because it's uh, it's relatively more resilient. Um, we have bought some value stocks recently because of the increasingly wide valuation uh, discrepancy that's that's built up there in favor of value. Um, the U.S. Economic Surprise Index has spent most of the year in negative territory, and it has improved into positive territory. So we think that could um, spark some improvement in value relative performance. But uh, in general, not taking big bets because it's really difficult at this point to determine uh, whether the upside risks or the downside risks are going to gain the upper hand.